I thought I'd try out the Origin 135C and see if this ship is any good. I've been enjoying my Freelancer Max that I bought in game, so I decided to buy another one. So if you're thinking about buying a 100 series ship, either in game or as a starter ship to get into Star Citizen, then let's have ourselves a little ship review. I am on a little bit of a roll with my Freelancer Max, using it to take my refined mining product to the market, building reputation with delivery box missions while simultaneously trading some goods. It's just been so good. But I've also kind of been wanting a smaller runabout ship, something that accelerates a little quicker, something that can land maybe just outside the outpost door, and maybe something that can execute those delivery missions more efficiently. Maybe. And I've got to tell you, I think my hunt might still be on. Now, to give the 100 series ship a good try and not just rent it for 24 hours, I went ahead and bought it in-game and decided to get the 135C, the cargo variant. I'm not sure I have a real great reason for that, but I like ships with more utilitarian potential than fighting potential. I might change my mind on that as the game progresses, but that's where I'm at right now. Before the wipe, I had an Origin 315P, and I loved it. It wasn't a fighter, but it had decent firepower, a roomy interior, a bed, a sink, a gun rack, and what seemed to be a little future spacesuit rack. It was pretty amazing and held 12 SCU of cargo. But I wanted to try something different. So the 135C it is. Now, I want to like this sleek little ship. But after getting into it for the first time, I couldn't help but feel it was a little tight on the inside. I'm probably asking for a lot, and I was making a comparison to the 315P, but it's fair to do so. Both the 315P and the 135C are the same price when bought either in-game with earned credits or for real money. So that alone set my expectations for this ship, and I realize it's a different ship and of a lower tier in the Origin series, but there's still a value factor there. It's not the only thing, but it's certainly a factor. In terms of entering the ship, I like the idea of having a short series of steps to get in and out, rather than always having to go through a door opening animation. I imagined it would just be faster if I was using it for these delivery missions and having to carry multiple boxes in and out. Makes sense, right? particularly if I'm able to park right outside the outpost door. The only slightly annoying thing was the speed at which the door opened. I'm sure this is something the developers can speed up a little bit, and it's not a huge deal. Probably something I'd just get used to, but entering and exiting the ship was one of my reasons for getting it, so to me at least, I wanted that exit entrance to be a little faster. What also mattered there was that I felt like I had to get really close to the button panel to operate it. Again, fixable, but still a thing. It wasn't all bad though. On the inside, it had this interior panel, which opened up to reveal part of the cargo bay, as well as one that provided access to the ship components. Being able to access the cargo area from the inside was nice, as it gave me a little more interior room to place down these delivery boxes and I could crouch down and get in there without any problem if I wanted to place things all the way in the back. If I wanted to do three or four of these three package delivery missions all at once, I'd have plenty of room to place those nine to 12 boxes without crowding the rest of my rather close quarters in the turnaround space. The ship also had a very cool design with the cargo on the outside. The ship holds a total of six SCU. Two of those is what was accessible on the inside, and the other four are accessible on the outside. And it has this very sexy little drop-down ramp that you can crawl completely inside of, then close the door behind you. It made me think you could smuggle a couple people back here, if that's never a thing in game. But even without that, it meant you were always assured of having those four free SCU, even if you packed boxes on the inside. I kind of wanted another sliding interior door so I could crawl from one cargo area into the other, but hey, you can't have everything. 
I did also discover another panel on the outside to be able to access the quantum drive. But there was one big thing with several of these panels. Once I opened them, I couldn't close them. They just stayed open forever, or at least until I claimed the ship. That can also be fixed. I'm sure it's just a bug. There was another little good surprise with the cockpit. I was afraid with the very low profile bubble cockpit window and the body of the ship extending out that I'd have poor ground visibility. But it didn't feel that way at all. Once I got in the seat, it raised up a little bit and I could see pretty well and got a really nice view of what was above and around me. If I had a head tracking system, I'd probably spend a lot of time stargazing and looking around. Now the 315P I had got excellent fuel mileage and this 135C should get the same because it has this advertised air intake scoop system that regenerates some fuel as you go. Right now in the game, fuel pricing isn't much of a thing, but they've said it will be once they get more of the refueling and fuel creation mechanics in the game. So it's possible this could be an important factor but that's something completely unknown. The ship accelerates well and maneuvers good enough, like a small ship, so it will get out of the atmosphere quick and looks pretty stylish doing it. I have heard others talk about its slow deceleration, but personally, I didn't have a problem with it. Maybe it's because I'm used to flying larger, more sluggish ships. I don't know. It does have grade C components all around, and most of them are industrial. So in terms of wanting to create a little micro progression with this ship, there's lots of room for improvement there. It also does have two size two weapons on gimbals. So you could do some very light fighting, but I wouldn't get this ship if fighting is your focus. The rest of the ship looks good though, I think. And I like the low profile spoiler on the back. Cockpit wise, I do like having one or two built in MFDs in addition to the holographic ones. I just think they look cooler and feel better to operate. But in general, I think the 315P has a little more luxury feel to the cockpit. In fact, I kind of thought the whole interior of this ship seemed to be missing a little bling for an origin ship. If it needed to be a little bit more sparse on amenities, then I'd like it to have some RGB lighting or wood trim, something that makes it feel expensive even though it's the bottom tier of the Origin ships. So what do I think about the 135C? Well, it did what I wanted in making faster deliveries. The open stairway for ship entrance was convenient, even though it does leave me open for hijackers. The interior cargo area stored my boxes and I was able to haul a little extra cargo to add on a thousand or so cash with each mission completion. There were a few odd bugs that happened with the ship, but with the adaptive intake system, I wound up using zero hydrogen fuel, even though I was burning the engines a fair bit. It has some nice features, but I just can't get past the price for value aspect. Right now, the way it's priced, there is no way I could really recommend getting this ship. If you were looking at that origin sleek look, and good cargo, then I'd have to say the 315P gives you a lot more ship for the same price. In fact, currently looking at ships that are priced at that exact same price point, even the Reliant Core might nudge out this 135C, particularly if you and a companion were wanting to fly in the verse in a couple's ship. Do I regret buying it in game? Not really as it gives me more variety in my little fleet. And I will keep flying it because I found that sometimes it takes a little while for a new ship to grow on me. But I'll also say that I think I'm gonna grab a C8X Pisces. It's a lot cheaper to buy in game and it'll give me a nice comparison to this 135C as a runabout ship. Yeah, I know, I should probably be saving up for a Caterpillar or Hercules for big cargo running or even a rock at some point. But for right now, I'm enjoying this little tour through these smaller ships. And I'm still pretty enamored with my Freelancer Max. I'll keep giving you a little rundown of some of these ships I'm progressing through. And also some feedback about where my reputation building has led me. 
Till then, take care, and I'll be talking to you later.